You heard that the fire changed the world. You heard that for wheel also. Agriculture, iron, medicine, electrical power, steam engine or some other things made incredible jumps in history of our civilization. But have you ever asked yourself what is the fire or wheel of modern times? It is my great pleasure to introduce Transistor, small device that changed the world. What is a transistor? A transistor is a miniature electronic component that can do two different jobs. It can work either as an amplifier or a switch. When it works as an amplifier, it takes in a tiny electric current at one end, an input current, and produces a much bigger electric current, an output current, at the other. Transistors can also work as switches. A tiny electric current flowing through one part of a transistor can make a much bigger current flow through another part of it. In other words, the small current switches on the larger one. This is essentially how all computer chips work. For example, a memory chip contains hundreds of millions or even billions of transistors, each of which can be switched on or off individually. Since each transistor can be in two distinct states, it can store two different numbers, 0 and 1. With billions of transistors, a chip can store billions of zeros and ones, and almost as many ordinary numbers and letters, or characters, as we call them. Why is the transistor so important? Transistors are the very basis of all modern digital electronics. Without semiconductor transistors, the only computers we can have would have been made from vacuum tube triodes, which need machines the size of rooms to get the same amount of processing power we can fit in a chip almost the size of a grain of rice. We could say that a question why is the transistor so important, is the same as the question why are computers so important. The transistor allowed computers to be shrunk from extremely expensive, power-hungry, massive machines, to small portable very fast very low-cost devices. Nearly everything around us we can know thanks to transistors, whether indirectly or directly. While the more obvious electronics can owe their capabilities to underlying transistor technology, we can even thank transistors for other things like our furniture and homes. Transistors indirectly allow these other goods and services to be rendered at a fraction of previous prices and gave way to computer numerically controlled manufacturing, among a multitude of other processes. Technical Basis Transistors are made from silicon, a chemical element found in sand, which does not normally conduct electricity. Silicon is a semiconductor, which means it's neither really a conductor, something like a metal that lets electricity flow, nor an insulator, something like plastic that stops electricity flowing. If we treat silicon with impurities, a process known as doping, we can make it behave in a different way. If we dope silicon with the chemical elements arsenic, phosphorus, or antimony, the silicon gains some extra free electrons, ones that can carry an electric current, so electrons will flow out of it more naturally. Because electrons have a negative charge, silicon treated this way is called n-type, negative type. We can also dope silicon with other impurities such as boron, gallium and aluminum. Silicon treated this way has fewer of those free electrons, so the electrons in nearby materials will tend to flow into it. This sort of silicon is p-type, positive type. We now have two different types of silicon. If we put them together in layers, making sandwiches of p-type and n-type material, we can make different kinds of electronic components that work in all kinds of ways. Suppose we join a piece of n-type silicon to a piece of p-type silicon and put electrical contacts on either side. Exciting and useful things start to happen at the junction between the two materials. That is called a diode, or rectifier. Now suppose we use three layers of silicon in our sandwich instead of two. We can either make a PNP sandwich, with a slice of n-type silicon as the filling between two slices of p-type, or an NPN sandwich, with the p-type in between the two slabs of n-type. If we join electrical contacts to all three layers of the sandwich, we can make a component that will either amplify a current, or switch it on or off. In other words, a transistor. Development history and first uses The first patent for the field effect transistor principle was filed in Canada by physicist Julius Edgar Lillenfeld on October 22, 1925. 
But Lilienfeld published no research articles about his devices, and his work was ignored by industry. In 1934 German physicist Dr. Oskar Heil patented another field effect transistor. In order to create a complete transcontinental telephone service, American inventor Lita Forrest, in 1907, created a vacuum tube device that could amplify signals on a phone line. This allowed communications to be sent across an entire continent at lightning fast speed so long as there were switch boxes along the way. This solution wasn't without its problems because vacuum tubes used way too much power, pumped out a ton of heat, and were unreliable. So it was time to find a replacement, and Bell Labs had just the idea of where to start, with some newly found semiconductor materials. Transistors were invented by three brilliant U.S. physicists, John Bardeen, Walter Braddon, and William Shockley. The team led by Shockley, had been trying to develop a new kind of amplifier for the U.S. telephone system, but what they actually invented turned out to have much more widespread applications. Bardeen and Braddon made the first practical transistor, known as a point contact transistor on December 16, 1947. Although Shockley had played a large part in the project. Shortly afterward, during a stay in a hotel at a physics conference, he single-handedly figured out the theory of the junction transistor, a much better device than the point contact transistor. Bardeen, Braddon, and Shockley shared the world's top science award, the 1956 Nobel Prize in Physics, for their discovery. Transistors were originally manufactured using germanium. This was the standard for the first decade of transistor production. The silicon-based transistors that we're used to seeing today were adopted because germanium breaks down at 75 degrees Celsius. Shockley left Bell and decided to start his own company in Palo Alto, called Shockley Semiconductor, a company that could be credited with being the beginning of the Silicon Valley. In the 1950s and 1960s, U.S. companies began turning their attention to the military market for transistor use, which left the doors wide open for other companies to build transistor-based radios. The first transistor computer was built in 1953 at the University of Manchester, but that computer used largely unreliable transistors that seriously hampered the computer. It wasn't until 1958 that IBM built its first computer, the IBM 7070, which was the first transistor computer that went on sale. MOSFET and Integrated Circuits Semiconductor companies initially focused on junction transistors in the early years of the semiconductor industry. However, the junction transistor was a relatively bulky device that was difficult to manufacture on a mass production basis, which limited it to a number of specialized applications. The metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor MOSFET, also known as the MOS transistor, was invented in 1959. The MOSFET was the first truly compact transistor that could be miniaturized and mass-produced for a wide range of uses. With its high scalability, and much lower power consumption and higher density than bipolar junction transistors, the MOSFET made it possible to build high-density integrated circuits, allowing the integration of more than 10,000 transistors in a single integrated circuit. Developed in 1959, integrated circuits would go on to shape the world. Rather than making transistors one by one, they were able to make several transistors at the same time on the same semiconductor. Their discovery also allowed for the inclusion of other components like resistors, capacitors and diodes, all incorporated into the same piece of semiconductor. How do transistors work in calculators and computers? We can put a few transistor switches together to make something called a logic gate which compares several input currents and gives a different output as a result. Logic gates let computers make very simple decisions using a mathematical technique called Boolean algebra. Your brain makes decisions the same way. For example, using inputs, things you know, about the weather and what you have in your hallway, you can make a decision like this, if it's raining and I have an umbrella, I will go to the shops. That's an example of Boolean algebra using what's called AND, operator. You can make similar decisions with other operators. If it's windy, or, it's snowing, then I will put on a coat, is an example of using an OR operator. Or how about, if it's raining, and, I have an umbrella, or, I have a coat then it's okay to go out. Using AND, OR, and other operators called NOR, XOR, NOT, and NOND, computers can add up or compare binary numbers. That idea is the foundation stone of computer programs, the logical series of instructions that make computers do things. Normally, 
a junction transistor is off when there is no base current and switches to on when the base current flows. That means it takes an electric current to switch the transistor on or off. But transistors like this can be hooked up with logic gates so their output connections feed back into their inputs. The transistor then stays on even when the base current is removed. Each time a new base current flows, the transistor flips on or off. It remains in one of those stable states, either on or off, until another current comes along and flips it the other way. This kind of arrangement is known as a flip-flop and it turns a transistor into a simple memory device that stores a zero, when it's off, or a one, when it's on. Flip-flops are the basic technology behind computer memory chips. Transistors today Transistor is for sure one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century. The MOSFET is by far the most widely used transistor, used in applications ranging from computers and electronics to communications technology such as smartphones. The MOSFET has been considered to be the most important transistor, possibly the most important invention in electronics, and the birth of modern electronics. The MOS transistor has been the fundamental building block of modern digital electronics since the late 20th century, paving the way for the digital age. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office calls it a groundbreaking invention that transformed life and culture around the world. Although several companies each produce over a billion individually packaged, known as discrete, MOS transistors every year, the vast majority of transistors are now produced in integrated circuits, often shortened to IC, microchips or chips, along with diodes, resistors and other electronic components, to produce complete electronic circuits. A logic gate consists of up to about 20 transistors whereas an advanced microprocessor, as of 2009, can use as many as 3 billion transistors MOSFETs. The MOS transistor is the most widely manufactured device in history. As of 2013, billions of transistors are manufactured every day, nearly all of which are MOSFET devices. Between 1960 and 2018, an estimated total of 13 sextillion MOS transistors have been manufactured, accounting for at least 99.9% .9 of all transistors. All electronic devices in our everyday life are based on use of transistor. We could say that transistors are bloodstream of digital era and modern civilization.